Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The last nail is being driven into the coffin of the American Republic, yet Congress remains in total denial as our liberties are rapidly fading before our eyes. The process is propelled by unwarranted fear and ignorance as to the true meaning of liberty. It is driven by economic myths, fallacies, and irrational good intentions. The rule of law is constantly rejected and authoritarian answers are offered as panaceas for all our problems. Runaway welfareism is used to benefit the rich at the expense of the middle class. Who would have ever thought that the current generation and Congress would stand idly by and watch such a rapid disintegration of the American Republic? Characteristic of this epic event is the casual acceptance by the people and the political leaders of the unitary uh, presidency, which is equivalent to granting dictatorial powers to the president. Our presidents can now, on their own, order assassinations, including American citizens, operate secret military tribunals, engage in torture, enforce indefinite imprisonments without due process, order searches and seizures without proper warrants, gutting the Fourth Amendment, ignore the 60-day rule for reporting to the Congress the nature of any military operation as required by the War Power Resolution, continue the Patriot Act abuses without oversight, wage war at will, treat all Americans as suspected terrorists at airports with TSA groping and nude x-raying, and the Federal Reserve accommodates by counterfeiting the funds needed and not paid for by taxation and borrowing, permitting runaway spending, endless debt, and special interest bailouts. And all of this is not enough. The abuses and usurpations of the war power are soon to be codified in the National Defense Authorization Act now rapidly moving its way through Congress. Instead of repealing the 2001 authorization for the use of military force, as we should now that bin Laden is dead and gone, Congress is planning to massively increase the war power of the president. Though an opportunity presents itself to end the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, Congress, with bipartisan support, obsesses on how to expand the unconstitutional war power of the president he already holds. The current proposal would allow a president to pursue war any time, any place, for any reason without congressional approval. Many believe this would even permit military activity against American suspects here at home. The proposed authority does not reference the 9-11 attacks. It would, exp it would be expanded to include the Taliban and associated forces, a dangerously vague and expensive, expansive definition of our potential enemies. There is no denial that the changes in Section 1034 totally eliminates the hard-fought-for restraint on presidential authority to go to war without congressional approval achieved at the, congressional, at the Constitutional Convention. Congress's war authority has been severely undermined since World War II, beginning with the advent of the Korean War, which was fought solely under a UN resolution. Even today, we're waging war in Libya without even consulting with the Congress, similar to how we went to war in Bosnia in the 1990s under President Clinton. The three major reasons for, the, for our constitutional conventions were to guarantee free trade and travel among the states, make gold and silver legal tender, and abolish paper money, and strictly limit the executive branch's authority to pursue war without congressional approval. But today, Federal Reserve notes are legal tender, gold and silver are illegal. The Interstate Commerce Clause is used to regulate all commerce at the expense of the free trade among the states. And now, the final nail is placed in the coffin of congressional responsibility for the war power, delivering this power completely to the President, a sharp and huge blow to the concept of our Republic. In my view, it appears that the fate of the American Republic is now sealed, unless these recent trends are quickly reversed. The saddest part of this tragedy is that all of these horrible changes are being done in the name of patriotism and protecting freedom. They are justified by good intentions while believing the sacrifice of liberty is required for our safety. Nothing could be further from the truth. More sadly is the conviction that our enemies are driven to attack us for our freedoms and prosperity and not because of our deeply flawed foreign policy that has generated justifiable grievances and has inspired the radical violence against us. Without this understanding, our endless 
unnamed and undeclared wars will continue and our wonderful experiment with liberty will end. And I yield back the balance of my time.